so firstly, hello everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, I've been introduced there, but um, I've been in James's for seven years. Um, I'm really interested in oncology, and over the past seven months I've had a huge opportunity to set up a, a new service in physiotherapy in gynecological cancer care. And one of my major reasons why I wanted to get involved with this is, apart from being passionate about oncology, this was the first chance I had to follow a patient through the entire journey. So I was going to get the chance to meet patients before surgery, after surgery when they've been discharged, and then also to help patients with lymphedema. Um, but also a big interest of mine is to try and prevent lymphedema happening, so to empower patients with education on how to minimise the risk of the lymphedema happening. So what I'm going to go through today is what, I, what I've been trying to achieve um, by setting up the service over the past seven, seven eight months. Um, what is prehabilitation, um, how it works in James's, and why I think it is of utmost importance. Then I'll just talk a bit about lymphedema, the early detection, prevention and treatment, and then also just some final thoughts. So the service when I set it up back in March, what I was trying to achieve was prehab. So prehabilitation is exercise before you have the surgery itself. So even People come to me two, three weeks before the surgery and they say, it's too late, I'm not active, I'm not fit. Studies are now showing that even just by exercising for two weeks before, by making that small changes two weeks before the operation, that you can have some really positive post-operative outcomes. And by post-operative outcomes, I mean that you might be able to get up out of bed earlier, you, your reduction in your length of stay in hospital, um, you will have improved fitness levels, and then also, you have um, already started your lifestyle changes, so it will help with the recovery after the surgery. Another aim of the service was to follow up the patients at around six weeks after their surgery, and to provide assessment and exercise to refer into appropriate services, such as Pilates if indicated, or any community services. And then to educate the patient on lymphedema and early detection, which I'll talk about in a while. So what is prehabilitation? is a process of enhancing the functional and physical capacity of an individual to enable them to withstand a stressful event. And what that really means is that um, a surgery for anyone is, is their marathon, and it's trying to prepare a person for that, both uh, physically and psychologically, as much as we can. So what the current evidence is, there isn't actually a huge amount of evidence at the moment in gynecological cancer care in relation to prehabilitation. But there's a lot of evidence in colorectal cancers and thoracic cancers, so we know that this will most likely translate over. And what the evidence is saying, at least two weeks before is time enough to start, three times a week, 30 minutes of exercise, is, is more than enough for patients to actually make a meaningful difference for after their surgery. So, again, this is just the current evidence, but in the UK they have set up a programme called PREPARE, um, and they're having some excellent results. And what happens when you come into the PREPARE program is, is that you're, you meet a physio, you meet a dietitian, and you meet a psychologist. And you go through all uh, short and long-term goals to improve your, your recovery. This, this slide really shows that patients who don't have prehab um, actually end up being less fit, so that's the bit in the red, than they were after their surgery. And people who have prehab, some maintain their fitness, so they come out the other side as fit, as they were before the surgery, but actually what they're showing is, is that those survivorship patients, some of them can actually be fitter. Um, and that's of huge interest to myself as a physiotherapist. So overall, um, prehab has been shown to increase all-cause mortality, prevent, prevent post-operative complications. If as a patient you're up earlier after your surgery, you're less likely to get any um, chest infections, any clots. The length of stay and discharge um, is improved. Um, and also it, that has a huge impact on uh, healthcare and uh, hospital costs. So the pathway really is, is that, and I'm still fine-tuning the pathway, um, but it's that once I know someone is going for surgery, I will make contact with the patient. They can come into James's for exercise, and um, they will have an individual uh, heart rate, target heart rate to work at. If they can come, I will send them a booklet with my contact details, and then they'll go for surgery. So trying to get an idea then when they come in of what is their baseline. So it's not a case of everyone, one, um, one rule fits all. 
it's everyone is of different fitness levels and they can work at their own uh, their own pace. Identify any risk factors. We talk a lot about smoking cessation, alcohol, perhaps they need convalescence after their surgery. Um, are they already having some mobility problems or do they need more home support? So it just means that when they come in, all this journey can already be started for the patient. So when they come in for the prehabilitation program, <coughs> the patients can attend as much as they want uh, before their surgery. We do cardiovascular exercises such as aerobic machines, treadmills, bikes, steps, and we also do some strength exercises. It's within James's Hospital and there's three classes offered uh, weekly. Follow-up treatment, the physio on the ward gets them moving, gets them ready for discharge home, and I can review the patient either in the doctor's clinic um, when they come back if they're travelling from far, or they come back in to see me for an individual physio um, after that. Um, and also it has my contact details. If they can't come to the class, the booklet in it has um, all the exercises that they need. Um, so then, what happens then after their surgery? Um, the main goal is to try, for myself, is to try and minimise the risk of lymphedema happening in this patient population. Lymphedema is a very debilitating uh, condition and um, it leaves people with, it can leave people with a very poor quality of life. Um, but it's very important for, for myself as a clinician to be proactive rather than reactive, to, so to try and inform patients on how we can prevent lymphedema instead of treating lymphedema when it happens. So what is lymphedema then? It's the buildup of excess protein-rich fluid in the body tissues and um, due to the problems with the lymphatic system. Um, you might notice that the leg becomes swollen uh, or distorted in shape and it's usually due to surgery where the surgeon has actually taken some of your lymph nodes away or perhaps you've had radiation or chemotherapy. Uh, it can occur in the legs and the abdomen. Um, in breast cancer it can occur then in the arms as well. So the system itself helps to fight infection. It's a one-way drainage system. Um, it can contain your white blood cells, such as lymphocytes, and it helps to get rid of all the waste products that can build up in your body. And then we have 700 nodes around the whole body, and that helps to filter all the, the bacteria. So most of the research on lymphedema is actually done in breast care. Um, we are improving in gynecological cancer care. Um, in 80% of patients with lymphedema, this normally occurs within the first three years. In gynecological cancers, the greatest prevalence is in uh, vulvar cancers, with up to 36% of these patients can get lymphedema, and it is much lower in ovarian at 5%. I just would say on the epidemiology is that we, um, nationally, we're, we're only getting to grips with uh, statistics in terms of lymphedema it hasn't been very well measured over the past year so they're just um, a rough, rough figures so presentation of lymphedema as a patient you might notice that your leg is a bit swollen discomfort or heaviness around the area and um, the skin might feel a bit different jewelry clothes might feel a little bit tighter and um, the veins or tendons in your hands or legs become a little bit harder to see and just be small changes, so uh, any patient that has gone through surgery, you really are, you're the expert in this, you know your own body, so if you notice any changes at all, do, do say it to your doctor. Um, and then this is kind of the education piece which I go through with, with all patients, so it's reducing the risk of lymphedema and lymphedema flare-ups. So your skin care is of utmost important importance, it's the cornerstone of your care. Um, so it looks at keeping your skin nice and moisturised, trying to avoid any cuts on your skin, um, keeping your nails nice and clean. If you're out in the garden, make sure that you're wearing um, long trousers and um, no sunburn at all on your skin. Exercise is of huge um, importance, so get walking. 30 minutes a day is what is recommended uh, every day um, to be healthy. Um, build it up, set appropriate goals for you. Um, I always say to patients, get a uh, buddy system going, meet up with friends, meet up with family, keep a diary. What I'm finding when patients come back in, they feel like they haven't achieved anything. And then we talk through what they've done for the week and, and it is actually amazing after what they've been through in relation to their surgery or if they have lymphedema. Um, and start doing just some gentle leg exercises as well that your physio can go through with you. Diet is of utmost importance as well. So an increased BMI, Will increase so increased fatty tissue will increase the risk of lymphedema, and that's purely because if the fluid has to travel around the body, and um, but the fatty tissue is in the way, 
um, it will um, increase your risk of, of getting uh, lymphedema. And you can help by just simply eating a balanced diet. So really my take home messages are, um, exercise before surgery is of utmost importance um, and a little bit before is, is, is enough. Exercise in general itself is, is, is key, uh, get walking. Um, remember as a patient that you are the expert patient, you know your own body and, and um, keep note of any signs and symptoms that you might have and, and know that eating a very balanced diet and, and avoiding weight gain is also of, of huge importance as well. Um, and that's it. Thank you.